And the third voice I heard pray and intercede for those who dwell on the earth. And I heard the fourth voice fending off the Satans and forbidding them to come before Yahweh to accuse them who dwell on the earth. See that? This is all talking about now, in these times and in these days. After that, I asked the angel of peace who went with me, who showed me everything that is hidden. See that? This angel of peace. It's no other than his spirit who knew everything, who knew the oath. That's why he's called long suffering. As if it was going to, but his spirit could have turned on his other half. But he chose to remain loyal. See that? Which again, you know, it's it's probably unfathomable. It's probably something that you people would not be able to wrap your head around but you have to understand these things not because I'm telling you them but because they're here for you to understand it you just have to you just have to come out of this warped reality that you live in when it comes down to spiritual beliefs you're not gonna be able to see the clear picture the real picture because your mind already has you know all these image all these perversions of what you think the Word of God is supposed to be and so, after that, I asked the angel of peace who went with me, who showed me everything that is hidden. Who are these four presents which I have seen and whose words I have heard and written down? And he said to me, the first is Michael, the merciful and long-suffering. The second who is set over all the diseases and all the wounds of the children of men is Raphael. And the third who is set over all the powers is Gabriel. And the fourth who is set over the repentance unto hope of those who inherit eternal life is named Phanuel. These are the four angels of Yahweh and the four voices I heard in those days. So, you know, just to keep in mind, who they call Uriel is not mentioned here because this spirit fell. It got demoted. It became corrupted. That's where you can read Ezekiel, the king of Tyre. That's why Yahweh says that he's going to judge this spirit as a mortal being is not a God no more he was removed from being part of the four living creatures you know also later known as the four beasts so he was removed from that those are the fiery stones so anyways let's read numbers chapter 11 verse 17 I will come down and speak with you there see that so there was a spirit of Yahweh that comes down and speaks and intercedes and prays. And that's the same spirit that is over all the powers. When it says all the all the powers, it's basically representing the seraphim, the cherubim, the ophanim, the heavenly hosts. So I will come down and speak with you there. And I will take some of the power of the spirit that is on you and put it on them. You see that? So this spirit has authority of using the power that Yahweh has given him you see that the power of the spirit that is on you and put it on them and they will share the burden of the people with you so that you will not have to carry it alone you see that so I show you this so that you may understand the other scriptures so that when you read scriptures like here in Daniel 8 and 17 where it says, as he came near the place where I was standing, I was terrified and fell prostrate. Son of man, he said to me, understand that the vision concerns the time of the end. While he was speaking to me, I was in a deep sleep. Which again, you know, this is basically talking about the state of consciousness in which you were in. In other words, you was unaware of these hidden mysteries before they are known to you that is a state of deep sleep okay so everything that they are teaching to you is like you dreaming because it's not real so now that you are understanding this you're awaking from this dream all right this spiritual slumber rather say that's what it's called 
So while he was speaking to me, I was in a deep sleep with my face to the ground. Then, here's the key point, then he touched me and raised me to my feet. He said, I am going to tell you what will happen later in the time of wrath. See that? Which is now. This is the time of wrath. Remember, Ecclesiastes says there's a time for everything. A time of peace, a time of sadness, a time of war, a time of love making, right? But now it's a time of wrath. That's why the four living creatures, they have four faces, right? There's four seasons, different emotions. So now you're going to see the face of wrath. Okay, how it says unto the elect ones, they're going to see the face of mercy. His face is going to shine upon them, but for the sinners, they get wrath. They're going to see the face of wrath. They don't get the face of mercy. See why that, who they call Michael, he's over disaster and over the best part of men, which is the spirit. Because the vision concerns the appointed time of the end. Remember it says, in the end, who they call Michael shall stand. Because why? Because thrones are set in place. Michael becomes the Ancient of Days. So Michael is not his name no more. Acknowledge it as the spirit of Yahweh. You see that? So, before we jump the gun and before we forget, I want to bring this out also in 1 Kings 19 and 7. So you can see the similarities in the scriptures. The angel of Yahweh came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat. For the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank, strengthened by that food. He traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of the Most High. Again, I'll show you these scriptures so that you may understand the power of the Spirit of Yahweh. Okay, me explaining it with my opinions and briefly trying to uh, paraphrase it off for you to understand it. It's not enough evidence, all right? It's not. And so you have to see these things with your own eyes. You got to see it here in the scripture in order for it to come to life in your mind, okay? Again, notice how the angel of Yahweh touched Elijah. The angel of Yahweh touched Daniel, okay? That is the same spirit. That is that spirit that does what it does. You understand that? Yahweh doesn't change. Okay? People have changed his ways, his characteristics, his persona. So, Numbers 11 and 17. I will come down and speak with you there. And I will take some of the power of the Spirit that is on you and put it on them. They will share the burden of the people with you so that you will not have to carry it alone. As it is happening today. You see, I cannot touch you physically, right? But I can touch you spiritually on here through the Spirit of Yahweh using His words. His words is what I use. That is what He has entrusted me with to do. I do not do any kind of witchcraft. I don't sit in five-point stars. I'm not into shamanism. I don't invoke any angelic names. No. I invoke the name of Yahweh and the spirit that he has placed upon me. This vessel in which he chose to use this to show you what you need to know. See that? That's how the power of the spirit works. That's why Yahweh says he's going to pour out his spirit on all peoples. So that you may see the same things I see. Scripture in here says this. Tell the people, consecrate yourselves in preparation for tomorrow when you will eat meat. Yahweh heard when you wailed, if only we had meat to eat. So, you know, you're seeing it for yourself in 1 Samuel, that's the scripture we just read. Yahweh gave Elijah food, and he was able to journey 40 days and 40 nights. That food he ate was that true heavenly soul food. All right? But again, you know, that's only for those who Yahweh keep blessed. Now we're going to go ahead and read from Ezekiel 25 and 14. I will take vengeance on Edom by the hand of my people, Yasharal. As we already know, Edom is the religious system of these Roman Catholic people. All right. Who is enticed by the demon Samuel. 
Azazel for the Christians. All right, it says, I will take vengeance on Edom by the hand of my people, Yasharel. See that? I will take some of the power on you and place it on the people so that the burden won't have to be so great. So that's why Yahweh is doing now. Some of the power that he has placed on me, he's going to give it to all of you so that you may see the same thing, so that you may use his words and what? And judge these people who deserve judgment. See that? By the hand of my people, Yashara. Who is his people, Yashara? Is it a specific group of people because of their skin color, because of what certain tribe or lineage they come from? No, none of that. We don't believe in that here. If you still believe in that, then go back to those Hebrews like camps. Go back to church. We ain't religious. We don't believe in none of that. None. Because we have the pure waters. All right? No religion. No agenda. Understand what it means. All right? Understand that. You're living in those days. And it says, and they will deal with Edom. Okay? With this religious belief system. In accordance with my anger and with my wrath. And they will know my vengeance. See that? That's why you're knowing all this, because you have to know why Yahweh is going to do what he's going to do, what he has done to the watchers, to these mere mortals who want to play as if they're God. Play with fire if you want. Okay? F around and find out if you want. They will know my vengeance, and they will know that it, it is not in vain, declares Yahweh. Jeremiah 31 and 31. The days are coming, declares Yahweh, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Yasharal and with the people of Yahweh. In case you want to play yourself, in case you think this is about yourself, your lineage, your skin color, you're okay. Think that if you want. These are the days of shame for you. Like in Game of Thrones, remember when Cersei had a walk? Shame! Shame! Shame on you for thinking that you are the people of Yahweh. For thinking that your skin color, your DNA, whichever respective family you come from, makes you a Hebrew Israelite, the people of Yahweh. So that's why it says this here now. Check this out. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when what? When I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt. No, 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 no. They broke that covenant. See that? I was a husband unto them back then. No. That's the reason why now. You're going to have to get it right. Now, you're going to have to earn your spot. Earn your right to call yourself a people of Yahweh. Citizens of the holy city. Earn it. Your DNA, your skin color don't make you nothing until you earn it. You don't have to like it, but... That's what's happening. That's why it says this here. Look, this is the covenant I will make with the people of Yahshua after that time, declares Yahweh. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. See that? So if you have not took this instruction to heart, if you still have not seeked out the heritage of faith, like it said, go ahead. Call yourself <laughs> the people of Yahweh all you want. This is your days, baby. Okay? Eternal execration. All right? You will make yourself a stench in the sight of the righteous. And we will be here to look at you, to look at the stench come out of you. All right? So, in these times and in these days, Joel 2 and 28 stands. And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on who all peoples of all colors, of all languages, who will come to the knowledge of Yahweh, who will know what is their God, who is their God and how is their God okay your sons and daughters will what will prophesy they're gonna see the same things I, I see right now the same things that I'm able to bring out they're gonna do it may not happen overnight but they're gonna do it once they start putting the pieces together your old men will dream dreams not physical dreams the spiritual visions the things that are coming to life right now your young men will see these things come to pass the visions, or because of the spirit of Yahweh.